In today's video, I'm gonna show you a brand new method never before seen on YouTube for creating grimy, gritty, one color graphics and text. I'm super hyped on this one, let's go. What's up everyone? So first of all, thank you so much to all the new subscribers that are here. Thank you to everyone that's been subscribed. It seriously means so much that you watch these videos, so thank you. If you're not already subscribed and you've watched my videos, and especially if you've learned something from my videos, please take one second, hit the subscribe button. I would truly appreciate it. So let's talk about today's video. I'm doing this tutorial for two reasons. First of all, I've never seen anyone use this exact method on YouTube. I don't think I necessarily invented it. I'm sure other people out there are doing it. I've just never seen it on YouTube. So that's reason number one. Reason number two, I went to the It's Almost Dry tour the other night, saw Pusha T live, incredible performance. One of the best live shows I've been to in a long time. Everything from the visuals to the energy to him performing every song I wanted to hear. So what I've noticed is that over the years, his merchandise has just always been on point. Like not only the merchandise, album artwork, music videos, like everything from an aesthetic standpoint has been dope. So what I'm gonna show you today is basically a method of creating graphics that have that sort of like fuzzy, distorted, one color look that he's used like multiple times over the years. I don't know, it's just something I've noticed so I thought it would play perfectly into this new method. So let's jump into Photoshop and I'll show you how to cook this up. Yeah. All right, so on the left side of the screen, we've got the text that we're gonna be recreating on the right. I know that this doesn't look like his current merch. That's not what I was trying to do. What I'm trying to do is just show you a method of creating this like super like kind of er eroded, like noisy uh, one color text, right? And the cool thing about this is that the actual text part of this graphic is live. Like it's live text, you could change the font. If you know anything about Photoshop, you understand how significant that is. So this is gonna be the final result with like the added noise and the, and the rock texture over the top. So I'm gonna show you all that. So the first thing you wanna do is start off with just a, a plain white canvas. I'm using 15 inches by 25 inches in height. 300 pixel inch uh, per inch resolution. I use that for all my t-shirt designs. So start there, right? The first step is going up to filter, noise, add noise. We want like a pretty decent amount of noise, so we're gonna go to 50%, okay? Click okay. And the next thing we're gonna do is go to edit, define pattern, and we'll just call it noise and click OK. So now we've got this noise pattern saved in Photoshop, right? So now I'm just gonna hit Command Z, get us back to our, our plain white canvas, and then Command I to invert the canvas. So now we're gonna be working with a black background, right? All right, so first step on the black canvas is going down to add new adjustment layer, which is this little half circle at the bottom of our layers panel. And towards the bottom, you'll see threshold. Click that. And so now we've got a threshold adjustment layer. So the next thing we wanna do is underneath threshold, again, go down to new adjustment layer, but this time go to pattern, which is towards the top. And we're gonna use this noise pattern that we just created. It should show up right away in this box, but we're gonna change the scale to 600, which is gonna give us like these bigger dots, right? And a little, we see kind of more contrast on the screen. Click okay. And then right away, first of all, let's change this to noise pattern so we know what we're, we're looking at. And we're gonna change the blend mode up here to overlay, all right? So it should just go back to, to basically a black um, screen, right, a black background. So now, above the noise pattern, we're gonna go to, again, new adjustment layer and levels. And then we're going to right click on levels and go create clipping mask. So it's just clipping to this noise pattern. So these are basically all different levers that we're gonna be able to push and pull as we're creating this graphic and, and it'll allow us to make certain adjustments as we're going along. All right, so now we can add this text in here. So I'm just gonna click the horizontal type tool on the left, click into the canvas, type out push a T. I'm gonna hold down shift and size it up 
and you can see the font that I'm using right here. It's called Knockout. This is Knockout is a whole family of like really clean, just like sans serif fonts. Um, if you want to check that out, you can just Google Knockout. So now I'm just holding down Shift, skewing the text, so it looks like the example on the left. Okay, so right now it's just plain white text. That doesn't really help us a whole lot. But if we double click this text layer and we start adding some effects, that's when we can start getting some, some dope results, right? So I'm just gonna show you a few examples using style packs from fullermo.com just to quickly show you how you could use this. So the cool thing about this is that, um, like I said, there's different levers we're gonna be able to pull, but just purely by trying out some different um, you know, like pre-made textiles, you can get some crazy results. And because we had the threshold um, adjustment layer and the noise, oh, that was cool. The, um, the threshold adjustment layer and the noise adjustment layer, it's reducing everything down to a, a down to the pixel, you know, black and white graphic, right? I'm going to show you the style that I made specifically for this. So it's very straightforward, like there's only three effects being used. Uh, bevel and emboss, if you wanna pause the video and just use these settings, feel free to do that now. This is the bevel and emboss. Yeah. Here's the pattern overlay effect. And what you'll wanna definitely note is that I changed the scale on this to 600 to match the, the noise pattern overlay um, in our layers panel here, right? Remember we changed that to 600. So we're doing the same thing here with that. On the outer glow, you'll notice that the blend mode is set to dissolve. If it's set to normal, this is what it looks like. But if it's dissolve, it gives more of like a noisy, it's almost like spray painted vibe. Um, so that's what we were going for here. So again, just pause it on all these if you wanna copy in all of these settings. So we'll click okay. And then now we can sort of push and pull some of these levers that I was talking about. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go up to the threshold level and I'll make sure this thumbnail is um, selected and I'll just pull the threshold right here in our properties window all the way to the right. Um, if you don't see the properties window, you'll just go up to window properties. So as far as the levels adjustment on the noise pattern goes, I mean, I didn't change it a ton, but I'll just show you, you know, if you move the toggles um, in the properties to the left, you basically just end up with like less of that stippling um, in in the text. And that's just on this example, you know what I mean? Like if you if you picked another style with different effects, it would it would probably change it, you know, and look completely different and, and affect it in a different way. But um, yeah, we're not really gonna mess with the levels too much. Right there should be good. So from here, um, to add the rock sort of looking pattern um, over the text, I actually used a displacement. I don't think I've gone over displacement in any of my videos, so this should be cool. I'm not gonna go super in depth with it. If you wanna know more about displacement maps and how to displace you know, graphics or text or use them on mockups or whatever, just YouTube it. I'm sure there's a video that goes in depth on that. So basically the first step in using displacements is finding the image that you wanna use to displace your graphic. So in this case, I just found like a, a really high resolution photo of sand just cause I wanted like that sort of gritty texture. So I thought this would be perfect. I hit up uh, pexels.com, P-E-X-E-L-S.com, found this photo of sand. I saved it as a PSD Photoshop file on my desktop. So what you wanna do is first duplicate this text. So I'll hit Command J and that's gonna duplicate the layer. And then I'm gonna right click and rasterize the type. All right, so now we can displace this text by going to Filter, Distort, Displace. And I changed the horizontal scale to zero because I don't want it to shift to the left or right. As you can see in this example, it just sort of, sort of shifted up and down. So I changed the vertical scale, which is you know up and down to 150, okay? So these are all values that you can mess around with, you know, depending on the look you're going for. I kept it at stretch to fit with the displacement maps and then repeat edge pixels. Again, all stuff you can just experiment with, but this is what I'm using. So we'll click okay. 
now you need to navigate to wherever you saved your your photo to right like so i saved this sand psd to my desktop and now i'm going to highlight it and click open and that is going to shift this text right so that's how i added that rock texture that's how i added this white sort of like noisy debris on the bottom and that's really it so here's something else that i definitely want to mention this graphic will look different if you merge all these layers together so for example if i go to layer flatten image you'll see that it's going to change um, a little bit like it just doesn't look as noisy um, it doesn't look the same as it does on the left at least to me right so Here's sort of my workaround for getting it to look exactly like it looks here with all the layers still intact. Um, it's literally taking a screenshot. Take a screenshot, pull that screenshot in, into Photoshop. Then I'm gonna hit Command A and grab this whole canvas. Command C to copy. And then go back into our graphic here. And I'm going to hit Command V. I just grouped this so I can quickly turn it on and off. I'm gonna hit Command V to, to paste it in and then size it back up to where, you know, kind of we had it here. And then I'm just gonna go to Image Adjustments Threshold. And as you'll see, like, it, it looks the same, you know? Like, it gives us back that sort of like grainier vibe. Um, which, which went away when we flattened all the layers, right? And so now if we just use the magic wand tool with anti-alias and contiguous um, unchecked at the top, and we just click the white and then hit command J to throw that white off of this layer. Now we have just this one layer, one color graphic that would be great for like printing, um, and everything like that. So I just wanted to mention that because I didn't want people to like get to this point and then like they merge these layers together or something and you'll see this will look all crazy now. Like, you know, you just have to know kind of ways around um, Photoshop and, and, and ways to get your graphic to look exactly how you want it. So that's my method. If it works for you, cool. If you want to try something else, that's cool too. So that's essentially the text portion of this tutorial. Now I'm going to show you how you could use, you know, random photos or graphics or whatever, um, using this same like thresholding noise method, right? So I just found this random cyborg woman PNG. I'm going to right click copy image, go back to Photoshop, hit Command V and paste it in. And now what's cool is that no matter how, like obviously you wanna have as high resolution of a graphic as possible, but no matter how you how much you size up and down, it's always gonna be, you know, fully thresholded, right? Like it, that, doesn't, that doesn't change, it's always down to the pixel. So that's what I really love about, about this method. And then now, you know, you can mess around again with like threshold, the threshold adjustment like this. Mess around with, you know, the noise pattern. If you want to change it, you know, scale it down to 200. So you can mess around with this, you know, all day and just make like really gritty, like thresholded images in a very simple way. And it allows for like kind of maximum experimentation because you don't have to like apply an effect and then wait for the effect. And if you don't like it, like like go back and then undo it and all that shit, you can just mess around like in real time. So that's it for today's tutorial. I hope this was helpful. You know, this is a method that I'm definitely gonna use in the future for different projects. I found that it's really useful and I think that it's, it's definitely gonna change the way I design these types of graphics. If you have any questions about what you saw in today's video, leave them below in the comments. You can also, you know, give suggestions on what you wanna see in the future. That's what the comment section is for, so I definitely recommend chiming in if you have anything to say. Definitely give me a follow on Instagram, it's at fuller.moe. Once again, if you're not subscribed and if you've made it this far in the video without being subscribed, obviously you learned something, so just hit that subscribe button. I would definitely appreciate it. So that's all for today. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.